Recently, I came across crossingthai.me and thought, ah, oh, that's nice. Its minimal and simple songs were calming and put me at ease. And as the next installment, New Horizon, was just around the corner, I thought I'd take a look at the music and what makes it tick. It was either this or doom. For those not in the know, these are the songs that play while you're out and about doing things in the world. There's a different song for each hour of the day. Because these songs play for an actual real life hour, <laughs> because these songs play for an actual real life hour, they need to be able to play over and over again without making you want to take your shovel and <laughs> it up. So that's what I'll be focusing on. The first Animal Crossing game was originally made for the Nintendo 64 in Japan before being released on GameCube internationally. Like another unknown gem for the N64 that I talked about in this video, a lot of sounds came from recording an instrument or synth, most likely an FM synth. Then with that short recording of a note, you could change the speed of it and play higher or lower notes. And thus you could write a song this way. This would save on a lot of space. Nowadays, you can find collections of these instrument samples in the form of sound fonts, which can be opened in a sampler like Direct Wave or S4 Zando. So that's what I'll be using, but I'll also be making stuff from scratch too. Also, I'm making this video before New Horizon comes out, so if the musical style does a 180, then I can be like, ah, can't hear you, I made it before. Some of these songs go as slow as 70 beats per minute, and others up to 123. Whoa, that's fast. But the vast majority seem to be around 100 BPM for that nice easygoing tempo. Most of the drums you'll hear while wandering around are these little short drum machine hits. Kind of like a baby 909 or closer to a 606. Nothing is overly loud and there aren't any huge snare tails. It's all just short and compact. So you either do a simple kick on the first and third beat and a snare on the second and fourth with upbeat hi-hats. Maybe change the kick a little to make it a little more interesting or you have time it so that it feels even slower the composers really weren't afraid to just have a bar of a simple drum machine loop all on its own. Like, look at this song, it's, it's a hi-hat loop with the occasional blip. Bravo Animal Crossing, absolute genius. I tried making some drums. For the kick, I used just a sine wave with a pitch envelope on it. It goes quite high and comes down low, so you get that punchy kick sound. You can change the pitch envelope just to give the kick a different feeling. I've also set the attack and randomness to zero, which can make some clicks depending on where the phase is set. But I actually wanted a little click in this case, just a little bit, as a snack. I also made a snare. If you look at this snare from the sound font, you can see two distinct areas. This lower peak, which is probably just a sine wave, and then this area higher up, which looks like some bandpass noise. So I made th those two elements and put them together. The hats are also probably just some bandpass white noise too. I was too lazy to make them, so I'll leave you to figure out how to do that as a challenge. Some tracks don't even have a bass line. I, I wasn't done. While there is diversity in the bass sound, from acoustic bass to fretless bass to some tracks just straight up not having any bass, the tracks in Wild World seem to really like this sawtooth bass. It's literally just a sawtooth with a filter. The bass note will often just bounce between the root and the fifth of the chord it's on. Let's say we have a track in G major, then our bass line is just moving around G and the D, maybe with the odd few embellishments here and there. 
carrying on with the theme of small and minimal, you'll hardly find much melodic content that is sustained. Not all, but most of the sounds just play for short little blips, which leaves a lot of openness in the music and doesn't make it sound too busy. What I also hear is a lot of what I'll call split chords. Basically, you're just playing the root note first with the bass line or maybe with the chords, and then the rest of the chord higher up. Really, it's just to ensure that not everything is playing at the exact same time, so there's a bit of rhythm between the chords and bass. Quite frequently, the chords are also played along with the snare too. Some songs will just stay on the one chord, possibly doing that fifth bass motion. But of course, you can use more than one chord. How about... Often, you can just transpose the whole section up and down, and that will work good enough. The type of chords you use really just depend on what you want to go for. There are some jazzier tracks, but overall, the mood is quite joyful and positive, and a lot of time you can just stay in a major scale and use simple major minor chords, adding sevenths and ninths as you please. It's really just up to you. Here are some common sounds that you'll hear. Electric guitar. Acoustic guitar. Electric piano. The squeaky thin synth. Mallet sounds. The accordion. The accordion is actually one of the few sounds that will slowly fade in and out, not just playing in short blips. So now we have the drums, bass, and chords. Last thing we need is a melody. There are two tricks you can use to help write them. First one is using call and response. Have two different sounds and then let them take turns every bar or so, like they're having a conversation. Hence, call and response. The soundtrack for City Folk and Wild World, basically just an accordion and a mallet talking to each other. The second trick is to try harmonizing your melody. Usually to do this, I'll start with a regular melody and then just put the exact melody a third down. It doesn't have to be a third, but I think that works well. You'll probably have to change some of the notes just so they stay in scale. Interestingly, there are a bunch of tracks with bossa nova grooves.
the secret here is the polymeter groove. Watch my dead mass video if you want to have a bit more information on polymeters, but each snare plays a dotted quarter note, a beat and a half, until it gets to the end of the second bar and then it repeats. Then the bass does that fifth movement we talked about before, but with this particular rhythm. Often the chord hits will play at the same time as the snare, but you can also offset it from the snare occasionally to make it more interesting. Bossa Nova does tend to have jazzier chords, so you might be doing trickier things like using chords from outside of the scale you're in. This video isn't going to go down the rabbit hole of Latin jazz music theory, and honestly I don't even know it super well. I just make a bass line and then find the notes that I'm happy with, and then write a lead. You can use the techniques I mentioned earlier too. I didn't mention this, but besides from having a song change each hour, they also change depending on the weather, if it's rainy or snowing. Fortunately, you don't need to write an extra 48 songs, just take an existing song, drop out the drums, and change some of the instruments to a high-pitched glockenspiel. Add a sleigh bell sound to make it snowy. Okay, well, that's basically it. Of course, there are songs that break the formula. Thank you, 11pm track. I'm talking about you specifically. But that's fine. If every track was exactly the same, it would be boring. Now, before I leave you with a handful of Animal Crossing inspired tracks, I just want to say a few words. Thank you to my patrons and my students who I give music production lessons to and just everyone out there supporting me. Here are some of my favorite songs. You can also download the project file and take a look at them each in there too. Enjoy.